For anyone planning to connect a wireless printer to a Google Wi-Fi network, you may not realize that there are a couple of different methods that you can use to achieve the same goal. So in this video, we're going to show you how we connected a wireless printer to our Google Wi-Fi network. As part of this video, we're going to take a look at the settings for Dynamic Host Client Protocol, or DHCP, that were added to Google Wi-Fi in a recent update. Let's start by first loading the Google Wi-Fi app. As you can see from the Google Wi-Fi status page, Google Wi-Fi is connected to the internet, we have a primary and secondary Wi-Fi node creating a mesh network, and connected to the mesh network are two devices. By selecting devices, we can see what is connected to the Google Wi-Fi network. In this example, you can see that we've already configured our wireless printer to be part of our network. The wireless printer has automatically been assigned an IP address of 192.168.86.22. Let's return to the Google Wi-Fi status page and open the Shortcuts and Settings tab. Now from within Shortcuts and Settings, we're going to select the Network and General option. Under Network, we have the option Advanced Networking. Let's select this option. Now let's select the option LAN. Within LAN we're presented with three settings. Router LAN IP, which shows the router's IP address. Subnet mask. And DHCP address pool, which shows us a range of IP addresses. Router LAN IP is an option that allows you to define the static IP address that you would like Google Wi-Fi's primary node to use. As you can see, Google Wi-Fi defaults to using 192.168.86.1. This means that we've already assigned the primary Google Wi-Fi node with something called a static IP address. No matter what happens, the primary Google Wi-Fi node will always be contactable on 192.168.86.1 Subnet mask is a way of splitting a network into two or more networks. However, as a home user, you would leave this setting on its default, which is 255.255.255.0. The final option is DHCP address pool. DHCP, or Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, is an important element in any home network. Basically, all devices connected to your home network will need to have a unique number called an IP address. Think of an IP address like the computer equivalent of a mobile phone number. Any mobile phone connected to a mobile network is assigned its own unique number. This is so that when we dial a phone number, the mobile phone for that specific person will ring. At its simplest level, this is also what an IP address is doing. It allows a computer device on your home network to communicate with other devices also connected to your network. Now you could manually visit each device on your network and assign an IP address to each of those devices. However, this would be time consuming. You could easily make a mistake and it's not a particularly efficient way to use the 255 IP addresses that you have available for your home network. Instead, it's better to have a pool of IP addresses so that when a device connects to your home network, it is automatically leased an IP address. That way, when a device no longer is connected to your home network, the leased IP address can be returned to the address pool, ready to be reassigned to the next device that connects to your home network. Unfortunately, for something like a network printer, assigning an IP address from the DHCP pool is not a good idea. If our network printer was to use an IP address from our pool of leased IP addresses, when the printer powers down, the leased IP address will be returned to the IP pool. When the printer next powers up, there's no guarantee that the printer will receive the same IP address that it previously used. So if DHCP does assign the printer with a different IP address, as your computer has no way of knowing what IP address the printer has now been assigned, it will send the print job to the last IP address it did successfully send a print job to. As the printer no longer has that IP address, the print job will fail.
Google Wi-Fi has an address pool consisting of a range of IP addresses from 192.168.86.20 to 192.168.86.250. As we can use up to 255 IP addresses in our home network, you can see that we have left out 24 IP addresses from our address pool. These 24 IP addresses are for any device that requires a static IP address, for example our router, a file server or a network printer. This is because when we manually give a device one of the 24 IP addresses not included in the address pool, we are saying that we want that device to always be contactable on that static IP address. This is important because certain network functions like network printing will not work consistently without the printer being on a static IP address. OK, so we now know that we can assign 24 IP addresses to specific devices like network printers. So we now need to note down the static IP address that we are going to assign our printer. This is so that we don't assign the same IP address to two separate devices. As the primary Google Wi-Fi node is using a static IP address of 192.168.86.1, we're going to give our printer the IP address of 192.168.86.2. Let's now leave shortcuts and settings and the Google Wi-Fi app and take a look at our printer. Unfortunately, not all wireless printers use the same user interface, but you can get a feel for what settings you need to change on your printer by taking a look at ours. Remember, the printer is already wirelessly connected to the Google Wi-Fi network, so we just need to assign the printer with a static IP address rather than allow the printer to use an IP address assigned from DHCP. Let's start by selecting Setup, then choosing Network, from within network, we need to locate the advanced setup option. We now need to change the settings on the printer so that it uses a static IP address rather than receive an IP address from Google Wi-Fi's DHCP server. Within manual IP settings, we need to change the printer's IP address to 192.168.86.2 With a static IP address now assigned to the printer, we can return to the printer's main menu. We now need to install the printer drivers for any devices that we need to print from. If you've already installed your printer drivers, it is probably easier to uninstall the printer drivers than reinstall them. This will ensure that the printer drivers are using the static IP address we've just assigned our printer, and that the printer drivers are no longer using the old IP address the printer was assigned via DHCP. Once you've installed the printer drivers, if possible, it's worth checking that the drivers will point any print jobs to your printer's static IP address. So why do we recommend that you use a static IP address when setting up your wireless printer to Google Wi-Fi? Put simply, using static IP addresses will minimize any downtime if you ever need to upgrade or replace Google Wi-Fi. If we ever have to replace our Google Wi-Fi network, as long as the new router's DHCP address pool is set to 192.168.86.20 and 192.168.86.250, the structure of our network will remain the same, which means that we will not have to reconfigure any other devices other than the replacement router. So to recap, we've taken a look at the DHCP settings in Google Wi-Fi. We've reconfigured a printer so that it uses a static IP address, and then we've tried to explain why we think that this is the better method to use when setting up a printer on a home wireless network.